denim gray. <laughs> you want to pretend it's denim? <laughs> pretend it's denim gray. Nah, the white's fine. That shit does brighten it up, though. It's like all the light bouncing off that shit. Yeah. No, the the, the Supreme Court's wilding this week. Um, what the fuck happened? They repealed affirmative action to get into college. Mm-hmm. They allowed companies the right to discriminate LGBTQ customers. Oh, shit. And they finally killed Biden's bill to um, get rid of some of your student loan forgiveness. Get rid of some of your student loan debt, the student loan forgiveness bill. Yeah. Did. That was the one I was... Excited yes, about. I'm upset about the other ones. Yeah. But from a personal perspective... That helped. My kids all graduated. Um, yeah. But I was looking forward to saving $10,000 on my student loan debt. God damn. But it's whatever. I don't even know if I want to talk about it, if I want to get that get, get that angry. <laughs> <laughs> that shit going to touch a soft spot. Yes. Uh, I'd, I'd be pissed too. Like, it's crazy. That shit, wow. But I ain't know none of that. Because all we was talking about was that sub- submarine for the past <laughs> couple weeks, motherfucker. It's just crazy you got a black guy who probably benefited from affirmative action getting into college, who's the head of the... Um, Supreme Court, Mm -hmm. leading these decisions. And it's crazy if you think back to the election that put Trump in office who elected these guys who are making all these votes. Everybody's like, yeah, Hillary Clinton was lying about emails. And not that she was the the better candidate. Mm -hmm. But damn. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker should have known it was going to be more later on. I think we just got to stop electing old people. What the fuck is up with that? Everybody fucking become president in their 90s. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Like, I think it, well, what's, what does the Constitution say? You have to be at least 45? All right, these niggas be well over 45. Yeah. Biden, Biden on his way out, yeah. motherfucker. That nigga old. Yeah. Like, uh-uh. I just think you need somebody with younger ideas, like, to really see some change affected. Trump was at home alone. Was he? Mm-hmm. He was at home alone. One of them. I don't know which okay. one, but he was in one of them. And this nigga still looked the same. Like, he's always been old. Like, this nigga, all these motherfuckers is old as shit, and y'all just, like, mm-hmm. I get y'all trying to say with, uh, with age comes wisdom, but a lot of these motherfuckers ain't wise, and y'all know it. Yeah, they, I think you they, need to- They are wise in a negative way. I think you need a balance of people who are wise and have experience, but people who understand that the world changes, right? Mm -hmm. The world's not the same as it was. Even down to, like, the cancel culture thing. I've said it before where, damn, we just rattling on even fucking oh, shit. the episode and shit. Oh, shit. I just realized that. I was, I was in a conversation already. I'm like, well, I'm going to finish the point. Like, I was listening to um, Halftime by Nas, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure today Nas probably will cringe when he hears the lyric. But he has a lyric. He's like, um, my style never switches like a f-. Excuse me. I, I, I know it's a <laughs> yeah, dirty word. Yeah. But it was totally acceptable less than 20 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. So that's just an example of how, how times change. And if you got people running a country that don't, change with like yeah there should be some roots in the things we've established but there should be some some sort of change Mm -hmm. some type of growth like even me i always say my generation has the best pivotal chance and not just because i'm part of that generation but you look at the good things that we're able to take from the generation before us the baby boomers right the the Mm -hmm. work ethic the hard work you know integrity Blase, blase, blah. But then you look at some of the things millennials and some um, whatever the generation is after them. Some of the things that they think about, like the earth and the planet and mm-hmm. health and other people. And I think the, the the blend of it, I think people my age have the best, because you got to see both, right? 
Whereas you're all the way like in the Gen Z, you've only seen millennials. You haven't really understood what good things you can, because nothing is all bad and nothing is all good. Yeah. And you can probably garner things from both to make this perfect blend. I've always said we were the greatest parents. Mm. Although people would argue that we coddled our kids too much because we were the kids who, you know, were raised with the hard stick. Mm hmm. I can go on forever about this. Nah, y'all, y'all motherfuckers was y'all, uh, y'all was some hard parents. You see but, it? Oh, go ahead. I forget what the fuck I was gonna say already, though. I was gonna say you see it both ways. Like you see people who who are my age or older and very like the baby boomer generation, and you mm. see people who are my age and sway closer to the millennial generation. And I think, like, I like to think I'm a hybrid. I sit in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, gr- I'm rooted. But it doesn't in- change the fact that you old. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but like I'm rooted that. in my. Technically, I could be president. I'm yeah. old enough. Yep, I'm you're old enough here. to be president. Yep. Um, but I'm rooted in, I think, good values that came out of that era. But I understand how the world changes, and I take the opportunity. I may not agree with everything, but at least I take the opportunity to be open minded, to try and understand changes and understand people who are affected by those changes, how it makes them feel. And it makes me sensitive to those issues. Yeah. And again, I may not agree, but there's a, a respect there, right? So. Hey, I can get it. It is what it is. But a lot of this shit ain't going to change. <laughs> like, like, motherfuckers has done, put us into a, basically a stigma in the direction that we're going. So now, like, anybody behind them has been trained to keep the same thing going. Mm-hmm. Like, we going, we move forward and move back. That's literally yeah. what happens every time. Move forward and move fucking back. I'm tired of moving back. Um, you that's why you move forward, so you don't go back there no more. The Matrix was definitely flawed. Remember they, <clears throat> they said that they tried a utopia when they plugged us all in and, and our brains wouldn't stand it. They liked the drama in the in the chaos. No. Then I'm not one of them. Cause <laughs> I'm not, I don't want none of these fucking problems. But um, let's actually start the show. Yeah. We've been fucking talking for eight minutes. <laughs> Sheesh! Let's get it motherfucking popping. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I am what I am, and I'm going to be the very best of what I am. And for those who don't like me confidentially, I don't give a damn. I'd like to thank you for letting me be myself. Back to the crib. It's another beautiful day. Back, back, back. I'm Ramon. I'm Darian. Be back. And this is episode 69. 69. Ooh, my favorite position. <laughs> it's like <laughs> jumping right in early. You know what's funny? The nerd in me is mad because um, you've seen Star Wars, right? You've seen the prequels, mm-hmm. and you so you know what execute order 66 meant. Not on That's when they killed all the Jedi. Oh shit! Including Anakin going and killing all the younglings. Oh shit! And when Episode sixty six came out after the fact, I'm like, oh, we could have named that Execute Order sixty six as the title. Oh shit! It wouldn't have made sense. No, but it had probably only been Star Wars. It wouldn't have made sense, but it had been Star Wars people that understood it. Mason would have got it. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Mason would have enjoyed that title on this project. I definitely wouldn't have got that. I'd have listened through the whole episode. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like. Like, ain't no executing no Order 66. Yeah, but that was when Anakin had to go kill all the younglings. Mm. He was savage. Yo. I am thankful. I was going to ask you another question, but yes, what are you grateful for? Because <laughs> <laughs> we just can't go. I am grateful for... I'm grateful for life. Okay. In all honesty. Like, there's so much negative things going on in the world. There's so much hate, so much, like, I'm just happy that there's positivity in my life and I have people who care about me. That's what's up. I am grateful for creativity. Mm -hmm. I was telling you a little bit before we started, like, my brain's been on this creative wave, like stories, songs, music. I, I created this whole song and this whole idea and the whole video behind it at work. And I was telling Mike, who I was working with, um, last night, I said, the problem is my brain thinks of this shit, and as quickly as it thinks of it, I'll forget it if I don't mm-hmm. write it down or record it. So it was funny. 
I had forgotten it and forgot to do a voice note. And so we were going through this voice notes. I have a country song that I wrote oh, shit. about getting some ass in a, as a voice note in my phone. I don't know if I'm ready to play it. But. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga trying to become Billy Ray Cyrus yeah, out this bitch. Be diversified. But um, yeah, creativity. It, it really... My mind state at work has been very challenged lately. I'll say that mm-hmm. and leave it at that. And it's not healthy being in that state constantly. So the fact that my brain's able to kick in and give me something else to kind of do. And then on the way home last night, I, I wrote a song. Like I was just thinking about it and I paused the music I was listening to and I poorly sang the lyrics into my voice note thing and then came and created a beat this morning while I was sitting in Toyota. It does seem like I'm at Toyota every week, but it's not. It's because both of our cars, we bought them a month apart, so the service is usually a month apart. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just grateful for um, having a creative mind and being able to use it. Right. I think other than just creating stuff, it helps me creatively figure out how to get out of situations, too. Mm. So that's pretty dope. What situation was you in, nigga? No, just in general. You know how like, something <laughs> happens and you can't figure it out? And you're like, uh... Nigga just bust a scam. He like, no. He like, oh, I, I would have shared. I would have called not... you. I wouldn't even text you if I had a good scam. I would call you like, yo. <laughs> you got to ch- check this out. We about to be rich. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. What, are the th- what is the thing about yourself you are the most confident about? Ooh. Give me a personality thing and a physical thing. Ooh. This was one of those creative questions that came up in my head last night. So, of course, I was asking everybody. What am I most confident about mm-hmm. in myself? <laughs> I'm confident in my honesty. I'm okay. Fucking... <laughs> if I don't like some shit, I'm going to say it. Okay. That's a good fucking question. You got me stumped for a second. You getting nervous? You fiddling? Are you pulling out a knife? No. Oh, oh shit! My fault. <laughs> I was. I was fucking with it. Don't ask me questions I can't answer quickly on camera. <laughs> nah, it'll probably be uh, my honesty and my uh, like how caring I am. Okay. Because even though I don't say it, like I give a fuck about a lot of shit, and that's what makes me not feel bad when I like keep my distance from motherfuckers because I'm always caring about somebody else's shit. So if I distance myself, that's like I need to care for my shit now. Right. But that's something I'm definitely 100% confident in. Okay. What about a physical treat? Physical? These nuts! Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I went old school. <laughs> uh, A physical trait of mine? Mm-hmm. My hair. Okay. Like, it's funny as shit. I love my fucking hair. It's the longest my hair has ever been in my life. And I tried growing my hair when I was younger. Couldn't do it. No. Me and Steve tried. And then we both got long hair now. But we couldn't do that shit. They put them... Remember back in the day, they used to put the little like tree-looking shits? The yeah. baldy shits all over your head? The shits that uh, in the Matrix Nairobi had on her head? Yeah. yeah. They put them shits in, on our head. And then we tried to go to sleep. We couldn't go to sleep. So that night, we was up and we took each other's shit out. Oh, shit. And then in the morning, my mom was... Piss and yeah, we never got our hair long again until we got older. And oh shit! Our own. Yeah, you know what sucks for me? The only hair that's getting longer as I get older is my nose and ear hair. That's horrible, dude. I was looking at my hair the other day and I was like, "What is that one hair sticking out? The fuck is that?" I'm like, wait a minute, it was growing out the back of my ear. Oh shit! <laughs> like that long. <laughs> the fuck? And then I'll be swearing I got something in my nose. Like I need to blow my nose, and it's just the hair. Mm. I don't know what it is about. That's all the hair that was supposed to be in the top part of your head. I'm like, <laughs> how can I reroute? Like, can they do a transplant to move these hair follicles That would be up weird. That would be weird. Then every time you sneeze, the front of your head leak. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, I am most confident in my ability to problem solve. Mm. Like you, you think back to situations you've been in and are in and will be in and just coming up with a creative solution to shit. I hear it. What is that? I have no fucking that, clue. My stomach growled earlier. But I don't I'm, know if it was me. It, I didn't feel it, but I heard it. Motherfucking, it oh sounded shit. close. Oh. 
it sounded it was in the mic. That's what, <laughs> obviously you heard it too, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's unplugged. I don't know what that was. Anyway, hey, y'all probably didn't even hear that shit though. No, <laughs> or you won't hear it by the time I finish. <laughs> um, and shoulders. I like my shoulders. Your shoulders. Yeah. You ever see a you dude, look like you could have been a linebacker. You ever see a dude that's bigger, but then they got no shoulders? It just makes them look yeah. like a pair. Yeah, yeah. It's so regardless of like, working out, the like shoulders like hang down and shit. Yeah, yeah. So not so bad when I wear a shirt. My belly's poking out the shirt because the shoulders are kind of broad. Like maybe I have to wear like a, a male maternity shirt, like <laughs> tight around the arms, and it just kind of flares out gently here. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a business idea. A male maternity shirt, bro. Buyer beware, we are drinking Balvini tonight, so. <laughs> facts. <laughs> Big facts. Um, so I finished the mindset book. It's, it's right there. So that means it's done. Mm-hmm. I've moved on to a you new You be putting one. at the book, but where I'm sitting at, I can't see it. I know. It's neither can they. It, <laughs> y'all, y'all know it's a bookshelf there. It's over there. <laughs> um, But the last section was about the mindset and parenting, right? Mm-hmm. And having parented, both of us have been parented and currently parenting. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a great topic, right? So they talked, again, this whole fixed set, fixed mindset, which I said it wrong last episode or two episodes ago, versus growth mindset. And they talked about, like, something simple, like, Darian, you're naturally talented. Like, the way you can grab a football, Mm -hmm. you're naturally gifted. Now, on the surface, you don't see any problem with that, right? Mm-hmm. But what their research shows is that what it teaches the kid is it's more important to be naturally gifted versus hard work. Mm-hmm. So, and we touched on this a little bit before, but so yes. um, you want to complement your hard work versus just what your natural talent is. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was an interesting topic, right? And we, and I talked before about how, like, I, I was, you're so smart, you're so smart. And I never looked at it how it makes you feel judged as a child. So now every time, because people have always told you you were this thing, mm-hmm. you always want to be that thing, and you're worried about not being that thing and what other things you do will make you not that quality, that quality they called out mm-hmm. versus... um praising your hard work. So then, yeah, we 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 touched on that a little bit. And then it, which they went on to talk about, you know, no parent, most parents don't intend to do that to their children. Do you ever, and I know it's a harder question, so if you want to not answer, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But there are often times where I'll think about a way I am or something I don't know or didn't get to do. And the natural tendency is to blame your parents, mm-hmm. right? And so I was thinking a lot about like things I do, and then I remind myself, and even before I read the book, I remind myself like, well, I know there was no malice intended, and she did the best she could. She knew how to do. Do you ever think about things like that? And if you want to move on, you can just tell me. I don't know if your mom watches the show. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, there's always going to be things that you wish were like done different or. You wish, shit. You even you wish you listened to like it's always something that you're gonna look back. <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> it's always something that you're gonna look back towards and like feel some type of way about something. Like nobody had a perfect relationship with their parent. I don't care what nobody says. You're not. It never was all kitten caboodles, hot dogs, and I mean I said hot dogs. <laughs> I don't know. Why I was thinking about hot Hungry? dogs. <laughs> I was supposed to say hugs, and I don't know how I got hot dogs out of hugs. But yeah, it's like it's going to be some problems. But if either of y'all still hold on to them when y'all grow past them, like that's the problem. I won't ask you. Feel free to to contribute if you like. But I think so. I try and think what's the thing that I place blame on a lot of, right? Or the thing I think about. So our mother in her effort to protect us from the area we grew up in, right? Didn't grow up in the, the, the sunshiniest, rosiest area. Um, kept us in and probably probably coveted us and uh, coddled us a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. 
And so we never really went outside to play like other people did unless we were with them. Like we went somewhere to a park or something and we went somewhere. Um, and I get it, but the detriment it made. So whenever I did anything extracurricular, I would feel guilty that I wasn't home right after school. Mm. So like I did the debate team for a while and I felt guilty about being out late because sometimes you'd be out late during practices and research yeah. and such. And then even my junior year, I was on this team and we, we had like science projects. Like we were creating a robot and one person was creating this thing. And it would be an activity that took place after school. And so I felt guilty that I was like, maybe she was worried because I was out and I would be arriving later. Cause that up until high school, I'd never taken a bus by myself. So once I got with the high school, it was a necessity. She had to go to work, right? She yeah. didn't take me to high school. <clears throat> so it would be bringing me home late at night, you know, and you're walking through drug dealers and fights mm -hmm. and shit like that. And so I get it. But the lifelong detriment, because what opportunities, and I get it, you can't focus on the past, mm -hmm. but what opportunities, what didn't I learn during that time? Because I was always home. Mm. I feel you, because it's a lot that you would have to learn, like you would learn by being outside. But also, like, it's a, and that's like in everything, it needs to be a balance. Like, me personally, I, I had a lot of fucking freedom. Like, I'm the fifth child, bro. Like, yeah, they at tired. this point, she's fucking <laughs> tired. Like, she done did this shit so many times. Like, like, and, and I took advantage of it in a way. So, like, I felt like, Mine is a little bit the opposite. I felt like I should have been pushed to do other shit more. Okay. Rather than me just being able to just do what I wanted. Granted, I love the fact that I could do what I wanted and I don't regret nothing that happened in my past, but that's the only thing I can look at to say like, and sorry, I don't just blame her, but I blame all my siblings too. Like, okay. y'all all should have, like, <laughs> I'm the last piece. Like, right. I, I don't, and I never understood that. Like, I would have, like if I had another a younger sibling, like he'd have been a shit. Like trust me, he'd have okay. been a shit. But you live and you learn, shit happens. Yeah. But I love my life and all my family. But we all got our shit with us. That's. <laughs> what do you think, as a result of any grievance you have on how you were raised, that you've done to reverse it? Because it happens two different ways. Either people amplify what they went through, and mm -hmm. they amplify it with their kids, or they. Say, I'm going to change this, right? Mm -hmm. To not carry any generational negative shit down yeah. the line. What have you done different? I'm literally like... I think got excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the head was, the head I, was I, like, I'm... <laughs> I, heard that, I heard that shit in my too. <laughs> nah, I was about to say, nah, I just became like... I know like that I had a lot of freedom and that was important for me to have. So I make sure my kids have freedom too. But at the same time, you're going to do all the shit that's necessary correctly. Like okay. I'm not going to let you fall back on some other shit and give you this freedom. Like you do all your shit good, you could do what the fuck ever you want. Right. Like I don't care. Like you just do what you want, but as long as you do everything right. Okay. That's what I was saying like cuz I didn't really Cause at first I did, but after a while it just. I can see how the freedom. Cause I remember, up until high school, we always went to um, a private school, mostly Catholic school. And in those type of scenarios, typically you have to have your homework signed, right? And it's mm -hmm. kind of like a check and balance mm -hmm. to make sure that you did the shit and you turned it in, and you had to have shit signed when you had grades, etc. And then I got to high school, and I didn't have to have none of my shit signed. Like, this is kind of dope. And because of it, for the first time ever, maybe the, I don't even remember the class it was, but I remember failing for the first time fucking ever. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised, like, wait a minute, how did I fucking fail? And two, I had this freedom to fail. And in three, I used to blame it a lot on, I was always the tease kid, the nerd, because I was smart. And I didn't go outside, right? So my only interaction with people were family. And then when I finally got to school. And I feel like as I got to be more sociable, mm -hmm. 
and interact with my peers, my grades almost took a back seat to that. Mm. And now saying it out loud, that it just used to be my belief, but saying it out loud, it makes no fucking sense whatsoever, right? What yeah. does one have to do with the other one? But it almost seemed to be that was the trade off, to trade off some of this intelligence mm-hmm. to be more of a social human being. Now, as a 47 year old man, I understand again, going back to what I learned in this book and life. It was just because I was used to shit coming naturally to me without having to work for it. Mm-hmm. And now when it came time to had to have to work a little bit to achieve these things, mm-hmm. wasn't used to it. Yeah. So I nah, just did it. That shit would make you fucking reconsider your whole life, motherfucker. You start, <laughs> you, you start having to work for shit when you ain't have to. That shit, that's a game changer. Like college is definitely a big eye-opening, awakening thing because all through school, if I just paid attention in class, because you know typically you went through the chapter together, yep. maybe you had to read it. If I just paid attention in class and wrote some notes down, I never had to fucking study. Mm-hmm. It was like almost like a test every Friday. Y'all study that shit throughout the week. Friday, y'all have a test on it. <laughs> and I was killing the shit with minimal effort. So I think, damn, it's it's just... I have always told this story that I stopped going to school because I had a family. Right? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. And I was telling the story to a customer. We were chatting. I forget what we were chatting about. And he said, oh... You didn't graduate till you were 20? <laughs> and it made me think, oh shit, in my head I've told this story that I stopped going to school because uh, we were pregnant with Ramon. And that's totally not the case. We got pregnant with Ramon when I was 20, 19, about to be 20. Mm-hmm. I graduated at 17 because <laughs> I'm, I'm no, born shit. in October. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck really happened when I thought about it? I think school was challenging. Work was easy, and that was always the rule in the house. You could live here. You either had to live here and go to school, and you lived there expense-free, or you worked and you paid expenses, right? made sense. I think it was easier to go to work, and Mm. I think I shied away at the time from the challenge. Plus, it wasn't what I really wanted to do. Mm. Um, I knew I wanted to do this music shit way back then, but I didn't want to disappoint, so I went to go be an electrical engineer, and I think working was my excuse to not do it. It never had to, I decided to work before I was having a family. I was working. I was I was not going to class in favor of picking up shifts at work. Mm. But it's crazy. I've told this narrative half my life until I realized the other day, like, oh shit, that story's not right. That there's a gap in there that it was me. Yeah. You did. <laughs> It was no other outside circumstance. It was my decisions. It was what I decided to do. Yeah, yeah. you chose to. Like, that was your choice. I mean, I chose to in the story I've been believing all this time, too, but it was me. Mm -hmm. Like, was it too? Like, And again, I don't know that I would want to be an electrical engineer. I found at the time fiber optics was a new technology, and I found it fascinating. And, you know, our internet and us uploading and everything is courtesy of FIOS, which Mm -hmm. is a fiber optic technology. I remember going, it's funny, what you're speaking to existence, right? I remember I was in EOF, which is Equal Opportunity, something, whatever the F stands for. So typically you go to school over the summer before actual session starts. And one of the trips we took was to AT&T Labs in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And they showed us this lab where they were experimenting with fiber optics. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was the coolest shit ever. And that day, I remember declaring, I'm going to, when I graduate, I'm going to work for this company. Now, fast forward 20 years mm. later, I did work for at and mm-hmm. Not in that capacity. <laughs> <laughs> but I did work for at and Like hey, the you, power of manifestation. You're in a whole nother section, motherfucker. <laughs> I worked for the company I said I was going to work for. That's funny, though. You manifested it, just not specifically that portion. Yeah. Like, got to be more specific with your You ass. got to... <laughs> You got to say, I'm going to work here doing this. You can't say generally. that have been fucked up. You're doing mopping toilets at at and <laughs> I said mopping toilets. <laughs> mopping and cleaning toilets. Mopping and cleaning toilets at at and That would have been fucked up. But it's just weird the way the path goes, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, And as I'm self, 
reflecting and thinking more. I'm blaming less. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things they talked about. People with a fixed mindset tend to blame people instead of taking um, responsibility for what they did, right? Mm-hmm. At That's a certain a point, at 18, it was all my fucking decisions. Mm-hmm. They were all my decisions. Mm-hmm. Maybe influenced by paradigms from parents and other leaders and stuff. But at the end of the day, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that shit, whatever that shit happened to be. Yeah, it's, it made fucking sense. Is that 18? That's when that's when I went and got my first job. I've been working ever fucking since. That was like me taking my step to try to do something. Right. The shit was like shit was hard at the moment. So that was me trying to give my input. But for the like two years before that, I wasn't even in school or nothing. So we're not gonna go into all of that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking. You know, I always I've been putting this new line in the description that says laugh and learn. I'm like, it's a lot of learning. <laughs> Not as much laughing right now. <laughs> <laughs> this shit gets serious. But nah. But that's that's what it is. It's about taking res- accountability. Mm-hmm. Everybody has to take accountability for how their life turns out and choose how to make it better. Not always how it turns out. I ain't gonna lie, because some motherfuckers do fuck people over, and then you end up fucked up. But yeah, <laughs> but I'm not talking about that part. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking about the motherfuckers that just going through life, and then some shit happens, like and you fucked up on it, but you don't want to blame yourself for your fuck up. Oh, I just thought of, it's kind of a funny story. It's some shit. So as I got to be a junior senior, because my freshman year I did debate right. Um, And I initially did debate because I thought the girl in my homeroom who was going to join the debate team was cute. And that's why I joined the debate team. But I ended up liking it. Mm -hmm. I was good at it. Did she join the debate team? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, she did. I was about to say, I'd have been pissed if you did it for nothing. If she was never there. Well, I did kind of do it for nothing because it turns out she liked women, not men. But I found something that I love to do. Oh, shit. (laughs) Um, I guess she found what she liked to do too, (laughs) motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I guess it took a while because at first she dated a senior. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I think it's about to go down memory lane. I know because I was gonna, <laughs> I was going into another theory, and I'm like, I'm not gonna do that here. So it comes time to college, and everybody's like, "Oh, you gotta be a well-rounded student." Colleges only accept well-rounded students, and I'm like, "Shit, I haven't fucking done anything since the debate team." I pretty much went to school, and went home, and then maybe junior year I got. No, yeah, it was junior year when I joined the science club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sister Maureen led the science club I believe You uh, said who? Sister Maureen Sister Maureen? Yeah she was a nun That taught at our school She was a chemistry teacher in our school Oh shit This wasn't a Catholic school She just happened to be a nun Who taught in the public school system That nun probably be cooking up heroin He don't even <laughs> know it Well fuck it <laughs> Sister Maureen was tough Sister Maureen is the reason now Like if you write something down And it's supposed to be like $122 but you don't put a dollar sign on it, mm-hmm. it enrages me. Because mm-hmm. she was big about when you write a number, you put the units of what that number represents. You don't just write a blank number. Yeah. So if it's 124.16 meters, that's what you put. Yeah. Or it's 124 and 16 cents, you put a dollar sign in I front mean, of the motherfucker. I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah, people don't. They just be writing numbers down. Anyway. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, what, what, what is this? Um, So... I joined the science club, and I think I was the president of the science club. I might, if I can find my yearbook, I'll put the picture here. The, the picture from us at the science club. Oh, shit. There's also a girl that I really liked in the science club, too. Um, anyway. You have a pattern. No, I joined the science <laughs> club <laughs> because I thought it was something that I would enjoy because hey. I like science. Uh, okay. And um, we had this bridge building contest. And so the way the contest worked, they sent you all these materials. It was like carbon fiber and these really light woods. And the trick was to build a bridge. And at the contest, the bridge that was the lightest in weight that held the most mass would win. Now, of course, I procrastinated. I thought it was cool, everything they sent you. Like I had never seen carbon fiber. And then basically you put this epoxy on it and that hardens the carbon fiber. It makes it super stiff pause and i was excited to have the materials but i just waited yeah, waited till the last minute waited and then i tried to throw some shit together because bridge is fascinating as much as they scare me to be on some of them 
they fascinate me. Like the whole engineering of a bridge, it, it fascinates me. And I put some shit together, and I think I was on the way to school that morning because I had to go to school, and they were going to meet, and they were going to take a trip there. I threw it away. Mm. Sorry, Sister Maureen, if you I doubt you're listening, but... Yeah, Sister's not listening. I threw it away because I knew it wasn't my best work, right? Because I just threw some shit together last minute. Mm. And then furthermore, I then lied about what happened. So here comes that creativity, right? So I'm like, I can't. I can't go today. She's like, what happened? And she, I, be, I believe she believed I was a brilliant student. So she was disappointed. And I'm like, well, I had it already. And I was sitting on the bus and it was sitting in the box next to me. And if somebody wasn't paying attention and they sat down on the seat and broke it. Mm. So they destroyed my project. Mm. And so I can't go. I nigga cap like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! So a couple of things begged a couple of things that I think my therapist might ask me if I were to bring up this story. Like, why did you wait to the last minute, right? And if I had to guess, maybe I didn't think I was, I was afraid of maybe losing. Mm-hmm. Like being honest with myself and thinking about what I just learned. Like maybe I was afraid of not being like the like the number one. I had to be the best at shit all the time, and it probably was where my competitive spirit comes from now. Plus some of the organizations I worked for, mm-hmm. I had to be the best. Mm. That was my mindset, and I wonder if the fear of not being the best is why I destroyed it. Well, waited to the last minute, then destroyed it, and then came up with that bullshit ass lie about it. Because the bridge had to be, who's going to sit on a box that was at least this big? Yeah. It would have been at least 18 inches, probably. Mm-mm-mm. Did you not eat before you came here? No, that was a burp. Oh. That was a belch. <laughs> I was, yeah. You want some gas sex, my nigga? Your digestive system having a time over there today. <laughs> Why shit over here doing backflips and shit? After shit, I'm not even feeling. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> For just fifteen dollars a day, you can see. This <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Oh shit! Yeah, it, it's. I want to do the therapy thing, like, like if I'm discovering some of the shit that I'm discovering about myself on my own. What else could I discover? Mm. To be a better person, right? And not so much to be a better person, but then how could that information guide my own children to maybe accelerate past some of these hurdles faster? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. will that help? Does that help if they accelerate through it faster? Or do they need to go through the same things that have the same lessons? No, they don't need to have the same lessons. That's the entire goal is so your kids don't bump their head where you bumped yours at. So... Obviously, they're always going to have their own lessons, but your job is to try to guide them so they don't do the same mistakes that you did. Let me prepare you. They're going to. Oh, yeah. They're going to. No matter. Think about, think about things your parents told you don't do that shit. hmm And you thought you knew better. I mean, I don't really remember too many things I was told don't do. Okay. I knew. I just knew a certain shit I shouldn't do. Like, I'll use a prime example. My mother had my mother wasn't a fan, but my mother had already passed. And so to me, my parents were my uncle and my grandmother. And my oldest was born, and they told me not to get married. Now, that's all I heard. Don't get married. Now, 18-year-old, 20-year-old me, rather, excuse me, took that as for whatever reason, they don't want me to marry this person. They don't like this person. And that's what I heard. And that's probably the sentiment that I echo, echo to, the, to, to her. And in retrospect, what they were saying is, nigga, you're not ready. Mm. <laughs> it has nothing to do with this individual. You are not ready. You just lost your mother. Your sister lost her mother. This ain't the right time. Mm. You're not mature enough. Yeah, I didn't shit. hear that. And... Outside, like I've dated some crazies that have some real issues. 
my son's mother has no real issue. That when you look back at it, the biggest issue is that I won't even speak for we. I'll say me. I didn't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. And so anything that I had an issue with, I didn't know how to communicate it. I, I, I took it as an attack, right? Yeah. Because what have I been told? My mother had put this in my mind that this person was trying to get something over on me. Mm. And we all know that trying to get something over me is a huge fucking trigger. Guess when that vig vigilante come out, <laughs> motherfucking trauma, man. Nigga gonna, <laughs> nigga gonna beat your ass. I you thought right? you would appreciate me using Blank Man as the representative <laughs> yeah, of my vigilante. <laughs> I thought it at like 11 o'clock at night. That, was, that shit was um, funny. And so what they were saying was, give it time and work on it, but you're not there yet. Mm hmm and that's a lesson that, you know, who knows, like, you know, your story's predetermined. So maybe I had to go through that to learn that. Mm -hmm. But how would things have been different? I had to just heeded that lesson. But instead, because everything was such a demand, a judgmental thing, I think at that age, you're trying to prove that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, or at least for me, I was trying to prove that I, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm a fucking grown ass man. Mm -hmm. What the fuck I'm doing? No, I didn't. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> Sometimes still don't have a clue. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess that was their way of trying to help you. Trying to make sure you knew before you actually took that step. This is, this is a major step. So let me ask you a question, actually. So considering all that, right? Let's say your son is in a similar predicament. Mm -hmm. And you don't want him to follow in my footsteps. Mm-hmm. How would you advise him, like, knowing everything you know and where you are in life now, how would you advise him not, like, for whatever reason, you don't think he should marry this young lady that he's, to he's told you that he intends to propose to? Mm -hmm. Walk me through the conversation. I See, I, I would need to know specifics because, like, in reality, I'm going to just keep it a being with my son. Like, I'm going to just tell you, like, yo, don't do it. Like, one, how long would have they been together? All right, let's 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 make this role play. Let's get this role play popping. All right, girl's name is Tamika. Mm -hmm. She is eighteen years old. Mm -hmm. In the scenario, your son is twenty. Mm -hmm. She's eighteen. They are six months present pregnant with your grandchild. Mm -hmm. Um, they've been dating about six months. <laughs> you better not fucking marry that girl, boy. Six months? Fuck out of here. Baby or not. Oh, no. What, what does that say? Six months. Software update. Fuck out of here, computer. <laughs> See, I'm busy. <laughs> Talk about not reading the room. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> nah, -uh, yeah. Six. No matter what the scenario is, six months, I'm not. Maybe he knows. Didn't you know at six months no, with your I wife? No, I did not. I did not. Me and my wife, first of all, we was together for a year when we was younger. And then I broke it off. So she'll tell you I broke her heart. But and then when we got back together, we was together for three years before we got married. Six months is not enough. We technically had four years of knowing each other. We knew each other about how we was when we was young, and then we met each other again. And I, w I always say met each other again because we're different people now. Like, right. Not the same fucking people anymore. I can't. I can't get behind six months. All I right, can't so, even get behind so a year. I'm gonna be. I'm a. I'm a tiptoe, but I'm gonna be your son. Well, Dad, I, I know she's having my child. I want to be. I see how you and Mom make it work. Mm -hmm. Y'all beautiful couple. I've gotten to see the, the the example of what a great team looks like. And I know that me and Tamika can replicate that. See, I understand how you feel. But what you need to do first is just live together. If y'all live together for a few years, then you'll understand who she truly is and who you truly are in the in the situation. That's not a very that's, Christian answer. That's the only way that... I don't give a fuck about... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not... Like, I believe in all of that, but I'm not in any I, religion. That, fuck that. Because everybody... Uh, Half of the motherfuckers that follow that shit heavy is going to hell. Like, guess oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You motherfuckers is through. But, uh, yeah, like, mm -mm. like I, that's my number one thing. Like, I feel like any couple who think they want to get married or y'all have to live with each other for at least maybe two years before y'all actually can decide to really get married. Like, I understand all the you... 
growing up to fucking like I can't explain it. You know what I mean? Like in them religions and shit, they tell you don't yeah. do nothing until you get married, all that. Like that's fine. You can still not do nothing. I but, mean, they're already pregnant. So in the scenario, Oh shit, yeah, so. they already pregnant. So yeah, it don't matter. They <laughs> don't matter. they already done sin. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> but yeah, like you I feel like you have to live with somebody before you marry them. There's no way like who they are when y'all meet up is just that. Who they are when y'all meet up. That's not who they are 100% of the time. Or they're going to be. Or who, who they're going to be. Or what they look like sometimes. Or, like, it's all of that. Because yeah, a lot of y'all ladies out here with this makeup. <laughs> Bro, like, and I know you've seen the videos on Facebook. Chick be all cute and shit. And then she take all the makeup off look like a booger wolf. Like, that, <laughs> that shit be weird as fuck, bro. The word of the day is booger wolf. <laughs> <laughs> you have to spell that for me. Put it down here. <laughs> That's a fact though. Like, mm mm. Like, she you gonna wake up and she gonna be left on that fucking pillow. Like, I'm not with that. So he decides to go on with go on with it anyway. All right, I'm gonna support you, but when you go do your divorce, don't call me, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> nigga, don't call me. Like, I'm a, I never been through divorce, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, fucked up. I hit him with that. Like, I've never been through it. You better so. call Uncle Mon. <laughs> <laughs> you want some advice? <laughs> oh shit! He got, he got the life, the life history equivalent of a fucking back doctorate. <laughs> uh-huh. But I ain't, I ain't gonna make him feel no tight way of it. Right. Like at this point, you are a grown ass man, and you can do make your own decisions. But like. It's just you got to do your shit now, like, and you want to get married, you got to try to hold that shit together or get a prenup, cause nigga, without nigga, shit get oh difficult. That's a fucking harsh ass question, but so they get married, uh-huh. it's like that. I need to, you know, he got a job. We need to stay here with y'all for a little bit. To me, to me, and the baby. I would never leave my grandchild and my son out. <laughs> Tamika gotta go. <laughs> you said something without saying Tameka something. Tamika gotta go. Nah. <laughs> like, I'm, like, because of my grandson and my son, I'm definitely gonna let Tamika stay there with them. But they got a time limit, though. Okay. Like, it's not, I'm not doing that. Y'all just stay here freely and nah, forever. Forever. But, but, Dad, you got a whole basement. Bruh. <laughs> Fuck no. Like, like at this point, if he's, you said 20? Yeah. If he's 20, then she, she's like 13. I know, so yeah. But she can, she handles her own. Like, I don't want this baby in here all the time. Like, we ain't got no babies. Like, I don't, like, <laughs> at this point, like, we just waiting on your sister to get out. Then we done with y'all motherfuckers, right? <laughs> Like, downsizing, they, yeah, downsizing all of that. Oh shit, fuck that! Like, mm-mm. we nigga, we been waiting for this. <laughs> like, like nigga, y'all gonna have to, y'all gonna have to make this shit quick, cuz like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't know what fuck y'all, <laughs> fuck y'all think it is. Don't, <laughs> don't buy no pull out couch for the basement. It's all right. Leave the yeah. regular couch. Like, mm, be plotting on your space. Yeah, like, I worked hard for this mortgage. <laughs> Facts. So let's say, cause I guess this has got to be difficult. You got an adult child living with you, right? And of course, you don't want to see your children out in the street, mm-hmm. but you don't want to be an enabler either. What happens when you say you got a year to get your shit together? Mm. In the year, time frame comes up. Well, I mean, I'm going to press that nigga. Like, you really like, going to be able to be like, there's the door, my guy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Think so? I think so. If if it, I guess it depends. If he if he's not trying and he like just thinks I'm just gonna keep extending catch him it. every time he keeps bullshitting and no, I'm not gonna keep extending it. I'm not like if you're not making an effort, then I'm gonna have to you have to go. You right. have to try to stay with one of your other aunts or uncles or somebody. Much is gonna probably fucking hurt you on the inside to put yeah, your son out. Yeah, like because you're not trying to make it better. Like you just sitting here dwelling it, not doing nothing to. But if you're actually doing the work and like I see you upgrading your shit and y'all still like, I'm 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 a, I might give you a little more time. Okay. But you got to actually be making moves in order for me to give you more time. Like you're not gonna get more time by bullshit. You're like, a great father, bro. Huh? You're I a great father. Be. No, I'm just saying like 
often we don't give each not us, but we don't give each other flowers. And you're just a fucking great dad in general. I, I just was sitting it, there thinking that like you're a great dad. Yeah, I appreciate it. I try my best, my guy. Like that's all all I ever wanted to be. It was a great dad. Plus, since my kids came across, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's hey, it's it's a lot, motherfucker. Like stuff, especially that in house shit, nigga. You know about that, nigga. Being in the crib with the kids, like that's house challenging. always fucked up. Yeah, I keep going behind these motherfuckers. Like, it's, yo, pick that up. Like, fuck. and it's challenging because how do you stay out of their shit? Mm-hmm. And I think no matter which direction it is. Like if I'm if I'm with somebody and we <laughs> fall on hard times, I'd rather live in the why mm-hmm. than live with family, mm-hmm. because nobody knows how to keep their nose out of shit, mm-hmm. no matter how hard they fucking try. Yep, that is true. Like um, like you see Tamika, and the baby's dirty and shit. You gonna say something? Yeah, it's your grandchild. The facts. But it's really for your son to say something. It's not for mm-hmm. you to say something. But you going I know I'm what you're thinking. Something. Like I'm, I'm say saying something because it's in my fucking house. Yeah, like nigga, you know, I don't want to deal with that shit. Like nah, if I see it, I'm gonna say it. Like regardless, if you see something, yeah, say that shit. Like don't. Mm-mm. But I think in some situations it gets challenging not to be able to hear your spouse or partner without hearing your family in either direction. Because if your family's <clears throat> pumping this stuff in your ear, not everybody can tune that out. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's your family, you know what I mean? You, you want to believe that your your parents have the best interest in you, so it's hard to kind of tune that out sometimes and just do what, what's right for you or what you want to do or what you believe is right for you. Mm-hmm. It's a, I think it's a very fine balance to be able to give somebody advice without thrusting your ideology on them, mm-hmm. especially from a parent perspective. Yeah, no, that's a fact. Like, I never push how I think on somebody... That's why I just like leave you the fuck alone. But yeah. that's like, <laughs> like I really don't, and like that's that's the thing. Like not everybody does that. Like a lot of people try to push their point of view on the other people, and like I feel like there's no point in doing that shit. Like you just want people to think like you. I don't want nobody to think like me. Yeah. I want to be an individual. I don't want to make other other people follow me. Like. That's what I look at it as. Like, you almost trying to get other people to just believe in how you believe. Like, I get coming to a common ground and understand what right. a motherfucker feel and all of that, but don't try to make me see it in your view and nothing at all. Nothing else at yeah. all. Like, no, that's not how this shit works. Like, I have my own mind for a reason. Like, I wasn't, my, my brain is not attached to yours for a reason, nigga. Right. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> We're not a, what, what do they call it? A, Hive mind uh, society. Yeah, like, no, it's not how that shit work. Like, you know how dull the world would be if everybody thought of, like... Yeah, I have an idea. But it might be a little safer, in a way. <sighs> See, I, See, it I, all depends. It, yeah. de- it depends. Because who are we all who, thinking yep, like? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that's what I was just about to say. Whoever we're thinking of, thinking who are like... we all thinking like? That's exactly who fucking matters. I, I like... Challenge. I like diversity of thought. Like I think our relationship works good because be, because of the span of age and experience. Right, we have some common things that we both have gone through, but in different times. And I think that makes the stories interesting. I'm mm-hmm. um, the contrast. You, I tell you all the time. You always bring me some fucking insight, even if you don't know it, even if I don't call it out. It'd be something that I'm thinking about mm-hmm. Later on, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. And I fucking love that fucking shit. Like, I, I love being with people who have a different sense of thought, yeah. a different way of thinking about things, a different way of doing things. And I'm not going to say I'm going to always agree, but it challenges me to think higher to the next level. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think, going back to what, what originally kind of spawned this conversation. Had it, lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Looked at the board and got distracted. I was, I was, oh shit, I was listening heavy. I know, I'm sorry, it'll, maybe it'll come back. What is your final thought, sir? My final thought is be fair, but gentle, and be firm. Be understanding. Love everybody that's in your circle. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal.
Sometimes be a good you gotta steal to survive though. Uh, yeah, I, that I ain't. Yeah, I ain't gonna. If you gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta do what you gotta do. But don't rob a nigga. Yeah, steal from a store. Um, my not five, at gunpoint. <laughs> I'm sorry. Comes yeah. with higher charges. Yeah. <laughs> um, my final thought is a. I never changed that light to purple. And B. <laughs> <laughs> And B, um, I think you have to be mindful of the things you're trying to instill in your children. I think you want to be a guide for them. You want to point them in the right direction, but you also want to foster independent thought. Mm. I think you want to create an environment where they feel free to discuss ideas with you without any kind of judgment. Because I got to imagine, man... Having thrived in an environment without judgment, the things that I would have tried earlier in life, and it's not me regretting, but just still reflecting back, like the things that I would have been more confident to take a leap of faith and do. Mm. So that's dope. Yeah. That's dope as shit, man. Listen and watch. Watch and listen. We talked about a lot. Um, Yes. We had a very concise episode, though. Yeah, this was this was proud this of us. Yeah, we stayed on one good. topic. Yeah, uh, we, was, <laughs> we was focused this episode. Um, listen and watch, watch and listen, because I guarantee there is some gems there. Like, like I said, I'm sitting here sometimes and I'm getting gems, and I love when I go back and I get the opportunity to hear them again and then do something about it, not just listen to it, but then take mm-hmm. some fucking action about it. We get gems on this joint every day. Make sure you follow us on everything at Wonder Crib across Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. On TikTok, we are Wonder Crib Podcast. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube Wonder Crib Podcast. And get some merch, WTCmerch.com. We got everything you want on there. We got new releases dropping. We got all of it. Make sure you go get some of the merch to show, show your support. Even show it. Send us a fucking picture of you in it. That'd yeah, be dope. that would be some dope shit. That'd be dope shit. We'll post it. Um and bingos are coming soon. I thought of another. Oh one. yeah, yep, bingo, bingo. Yeah, I thought of two different ones. So I thought of one too. So we'll discuss afterwards. Yeah. Anyway, yep. until next week. We working while we working. Yeah, <laughs> that's what <laughs> shit. That's a way to fucking do it. Uh, until next week, we appreciate all of you. Uh, love you for coming back. Love you for staying. Love you for sharing with other people. Till next week. Peace. Peace. Caught that motherfucker. Got it. <laughs> <laughs>